this is one of my Next.js 13 starter kits. So here I have just set up an authentication system uh, using Next.js at the front end, TypeScript, and Trappy as the back end. This is the one uh, provides me with the JWT or JSON web token with the user. So this is the user I'm using to log in and this is what I get. So let me just uh, show the functionality. So I'm just uh, clicking here, sign in, and immediately you see the state change and uh, profile showing up. And here you see the JWT cookie showing up. And when I sign out, this goes away, I get my login button back. Now, this is not a regular um, cookie I'm using. This is an HTTP only cookie. Let me explain. Okay, so under the normal circumstances, when somebody uses a login form like this, the request goes straight to Strapi backend, and Strapi then sends the JWT token, and in the app, you then store that in the browser cookie. Now, problem with browser cookies are that it is prone to XSS or cross-site scripting attack from a browser-based JavaScript. You can actually pick up that cookie and pack into the application. So to avoid that, this is what I'm following. All right, so here you can see a regular login form, and the login request goes in, but this time we're not sending it straight to the Strapi server. We are intercepting it with, a, with our own little API route created in Next.js API. Now, see, this actually can be possible if we actually change the Strapi server's own configuration. But instead of doing that, that can get really complicated. I didn't want to mess with the Strapi's own configuration. So I took matter into my own hand, created myself a, my own login API route. And here I put my code so that from this point, I'm making the call to the Strapi server and collecting the JW, JW token and the user data. And here I'm converting that token into an HTTP only cookie, which can be written from only the server side to the browser. But this time, the cookie you saw here, this guy, this guy, you cannot collect this guy or touch this one from any browser side JavaScript. This will not be possible. So this way, it can be protected from XSS attack. And using that cookie, then I maintain my login status, logout status, etc. Now let's take a look at the code. All right, so this is my Next.js code. As you can see, the components are here, uh, context, pages, uh, the API, and these are the API endpoints that, were, that are created on the Next.js. As you know, uh, Next.js can handle both client-side and uh, server-side code, and this is the server-side. Basically, these guys are this right here. See, this is the one that are intercepting my front-end calls. This is where I create the HTTP-only cookie and send it to the browser, where I put the JW token collected from Strapi. Now let's get back. All right, so now uh, here I have my services uh, all lined up. We can start right here, and this is the one I'm using to con you know, communicate with the backend. And if you can, as you can see here, the login JS. This is where I'm calling in that uh, client, and uh, based on that, I am making a post request to the uh, backend slash auth slash local, which is this guy. So API slash auth slash local. This is the Strapi backend. And this is where I'm getting this uh, JWT token and the user information from. And once I do, I'm collecting the, the token, JSON web token, and uh, setting it to the header. And this is where I am also serializing it to the, to the browser. This is where I'm talking about this guy. 
And uh, as you can see clearly here, HTTP only, true. This is what makes that cookie a server-side cookie or HTTP only cookie. And the rest are just uh, messages and error color, you know, error handling. That being said, uh, let's look at the logout. It's pretty simple. And I do have another one called current user. And this is the one makes the call to the backend user slash me or me, uh, which is basically giving you the current user status. And this is important to when, uh, you know, when the user is logged in and somebody, you know, refreshes the page. And, and this is where, is how I maintain the, uh, the status of the logged in user. You, it will be clearer when I show you the context. All right. And this actually ends the back end stuff. Now let's look at the front end. For the front end, I use this API client, which is basically making the call to the local API. We look in the .env, and this is this is where uh, the local application is running, and this URL is being used. And the, this is the uh, these are the um, the Strapi back end stuff. So this time here, I'm making a call to the local API on Next.js. And based on that, I have an auth service set up. This service has the, all the necessary functions, logging, logout, check auth status. And this is the one going to the current user, logout going to the logout, login going to the login. And this auth service is being used to my auth context. And these are just my uh, interfaces for TypeScript. My context got created, and here's my auth provider. First, let's look at the base functions, which is the login function. This is where the, I'm using the auth service to make a call to that login function in that auth service, which is eventually making the call to the local backend, or actually eventually making the call to the Strapi backend. Depending on that, I am setting all my you know states. Is set authenticated? is set user, user data, also using a auth flag, a boolean that I'm storing in the local storage. And this is the one, and this is the one I'm gonna be using to check the status here. Anytime the page is refreshed, first uh, we, I check for that auth flag because if the user is not logged in, I'm not gonna make that extra backend call. So right here, it's just gonna set everything to null. But if the user is logged in, then I make that call to the auth service and to the check auth status, which basically makes a call to the current user, gets the current user information, updates, keeps the status up, up to date. And here is the logout. It's just simple removing the, changing the status to false, set user to null, and removing the auth flag. And that's about it. This is how. I just implemented this whole structure right here. At this point, I'm just, I'm not going to bother with the, uh, the modal or the uh, form code. Hopefully, this all made sense. Thanks for watching.